Well, praise Jesus today, everyone. I wanted to speak about something that I've been thinking about a few days, and that's in regards to Easter, church, and Christian fellowship. Now, there's a few reasons why I and my family don't celebrate Easter. There, of course, is the reason that it has a lot of its roots in paganism. I know that the Christian church has adopted many holidays and tried to make it Christian, including things like Halloween. They have trunk or treat instead of trick or treat, and they invite people to their church and they try to be a testimony for Jesus and try to turn something that's worldly into something that's godly. But it ends up just being a gimmick. And I tend to steer away from anything that is pagan or has its roots in paganism and is ungodly. As disciples of Jesus, we don't want to look anything like the world, and we certainly don't want our roots to be pagan or to be practicing things that had um, roots in evil or Satanism. Now, one of those things is also Easter. If you research a bit about Easter, you will notice how it does have a lot of its roots in paganism, but how the Christian church tried to relate Easter with the Passover and made it into the Christian version of the Passover, where we now celebrate that Jesus has resurrected from the dead. And all of those things are good to remember, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he resurrected and he made the way for us, that he made atonement for our sins. But here's the thing, guys. When you start mixing Santa Claus um, and Christmas with Jesus' birth, and when you start mi mixing um, the Easter bunny and uh, pagan eggs and pagan rituals with Jesus' resurrection, you're left with something that is not truly for a disciple of God at all. And this is the same thing that happens in church all the time. They mix the culture, things of the world, with things that are godly, and they have this collaboration of falsehoods with things that are truth. And this is what Satan does all the time. But besides the fact that Easter has its roots in a lot of things that are pagan, the main reason that I keep myself separate from this holiday, even though it's a high holiday, high holy day for the Christians, is because it is rooted in a lot of hypocrisy within the Christian church. So forget about the whole um, pagan thing for a minute and hear me out on the fact that most Christians are only Christians one day of the week. They're very hypocritical. They want to say Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed, but they only celebrate Jesus as risen on their high holy days. But the rest of the year, they're living like Jesus was dead and they are alive to their sins. So they're into pornography, they're smoking pot, they're lusting after women, they're not raising their children uh, for the Lord or living uh, for God every day. They're not overcoming sin, temptation. They're serving themselves all the time. Yet then when there's a high holy Christian day or high holy Jewish day, they act as though they're Jewish or Christian. And that is hypocrisy. So as for myself, I don't keep this, this particular day or Christmas or Halloween or any of these days because they're rooted in paganism and in Christian hypocrisy. And if we come to really love and obey Jesus, he pulls us out of the world, out of falsehood, and he writes his truth and his love and his justice on our heart. And we trade those things of the world, those lies and falsehoods and false brotherhoods, false churches, we trade that for the truth. Things that are really noble and upright and pure, the things of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit hasn't called us to be part of Easter festivals or Easter egg hunts or church potlucks after church on Sunday. He's called us to be holy every day. So, of course, we acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross and he resurrected. Of course, uh, we believe that um, Jesus was born of a virgin. And um, all of these things that the Christians celebrate, we also celebrate in our hearts knowing that they're the truth. But we don't keep them mixed with pagan ritual and with fellowship that's ungodly. 
Now, a lot of Christians say, well, I don't believe in any of that pagan stuff, nor does my church. Well, the Lord has called me to be separate from false believers, from false churches. And this is also somewhere where a lot of Christians get led astray. Um, I notice a lot of Christians spend a whole lot of time looking for what they call um, a family, Christian fellowship, um, some wise counsel. But at the end of the day, they're looking to be justified by men and have friends of their choice. But they're not dedicated to follow Jesus even if the road is lonely. But if we want to be in the truth, we have to seek first fellowship with our Creator. And if we seek first fellowship with God, and if in all of our being we want to be right with God, then we're not going to be throwing our energy towards trying to start a 501c3 church or start a home church or pretend that we're loving because we are starting Bible studies in our house. We have to wait on the Lord and ask him how we can truly be in fellowship with him and be dedicated to him. And then after we have fellowship with God, then he leads us in how to be fruitful and how to multiply. But that does not happen with joining a local church or becoming a 501c3 or being ordained by your local government. You have to be ordained and set apart and commissioned by God. You have to receive his Holy Spirit. And sadly, most Christians are just looking for a church group. They're looking for a club. They feel lonely. And instead of waiting on the Lord, knowing that he is their best friend and always there for us, they jump the gun, they go out in front of God, and they go find what they think is a good fellow brother or sister, a good a Christian Bible-believing church. And for a minute, it looks like it's good. And then down the line, um, Satan uses those brothers and sisters to get them off of the straight and narrow path. I don't know how many times Christians have started out good with Jesus, seeking fellowship with him, wanting to be in the truth, but then because they were lonely and sought out fellowship with other believers first and not God, then they were led astray by the devil. Who do you think the devil will use to distract you if you are serious about God? He's not going to use an atheist. He's not going to use um, a Buddhist. He's not going to use someone that's an unbeliever. Satan will use a fellow brother or sister, someone that you trust to get you off the straight and narrow path because that's who you will allow into your life. So we have to be very careful who we allow into our life, who we allow to guide us. Jesus said, call no one on earth your father. Call no one your teacher or one your leader. Jesus wants to be our leader. He wants to be our pastor. He wants to be our shepherd. And if you're making other people, if you're setting up other people as your pastor, your leader, your spiritual father, then you're kicking out of Jesus out of his rightful seat. So you're kicking him out of that chair and you're setting up your own pastor or your own father to be your leader and your teacher. Too many Christians do this, and the next thing they know, they're fighting for their own marriage, they're fighting for custody over their children, they're fighting um, over their house, their marriages are falling apart, and the last thing they're thinking of is how they can really just please God and be a light to the world, because they're fighting for their own souls to their own death. If we want to be really steadfast and be able to praise the Lord and worship Him and bearing good fruit, we have to get things right from the beginning. We have to stay separate from the ungodly churches that are participating in things like Easter and pagan rituals. And we have to stay separate from so-called brothers and sisters who God did not put in our life, but who the devil is trying to implant in our lives to distract us from the kingdom of God. We have to be steadfast in the truth and walk with Jesus in his truth even if no one else goes with us. It's like that song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow, no turning back. That's how we have to be. If we are dedicated to Jesus, even if none of our friends go with us, even if we can't find a church 
that truly follows the Lord, we will still go with Jesus, even if it is just you and Jesus. We will go with him. And as we follow the Lord, he, as he promises, will give us everything that we need. So don't let a church distract you from following the kingdom of God. Don't let a brother or sister, because Satan uses many brothers and sisters to distract the church and get people off of the straight and narrow path. Suddenly, you're not concerned with the things Jesus is saying, but you have all these new concerns that are coming from a brother or sister or someone that has pushed their way into your life. Jesus didn't put them there. Their dreams or visions are not coming from God. They're coming from that person's imagination, and they're trying to manipulate you and make you believe things that are on their conscience, not things that are coming from the Holy Spirit. And too many Christians are just so distracted by another brother or sister's dreams and visions and feelings for their life. You need to get your focus back on the Lord and get away from these people, get away from these organizations. Jesus cares for your soul. He will put the right people in your life. And the people the Lord puts in your life, you better keep in your life. For me, that is my wife, my children, the people that are close around me, that the Lord himself has truly put in my life. But when other people try to push their way into your life that God has not put there, they will try to manipulate you. They'll try to take your money. They'll try to steal from you. Anything that Jesus has blessed you with, they will try to take away what is rightfully yours. That is the business of Satan, to take from you what God has rightfully given you. And the churches are notorious for doing this. They will strip everything that God has rightfully given you. If you are a man, the church will strip away your God-given man authority to raise your household, to have authority over your wife and your children in your own life. They want to pervert you. They want to steer you away from the truth that they can be your leader. They're zealous for your soul, but not for righteousness but for a perverted reason so that they can control and manipulate and fleece you and their flock. Will we be dedicated to Jesus and remember the new covenant? Of course, Jesus is alive. Of course, he died on the cross. He resurrected. He is alive. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The tomb is left empty. Of course, but will we truly follow the Lord in righteousness or Will we be saying in some church somewhere, he is risen, he is risen indeed, and then going to some Easter egg hunt. Meanwhile, Satan is stripping away any spiritual authority the man has and taking away the things that God has rightfully given your family. Will you let Satan strip the life God has given you away? Or will you take back what is rightfully yours and hold on to the truth and grow with the Lord so that he can bless you and your family. I hope this makes sense to you because too many Christians are allowing Satan to strip them of everything they have, true manhood, true righteousness, the ability to be a testimony, to be a light to the world. They're falling into false religion. They're falling into idolatry and adultery and every sort of evil. These churches that we have across America are full of falsehood and they are leading people to hell every day. We need to, as men, stand up for the truth and warn people that they need to get out of dead religion, get out of paganism, get out of false relationships. Just leave those relationships that God hasn't put in your life. If someone's in your life that God hasn't put there, don't allow them to speak anything into your life that they call truth. Don't listen to them. Jesus has given his Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. He hasn't given some brother or sister to be your spiritual authority or the leader of your marriage. Don't allow someone to strip away the truth of the Holy Spirit from you. I hope someone out there finds Jesus for real, puts their faith in the new covenant, and is not distracted by the Christian church, by Easter, by Christmas, by Halloween, by any of those traditions of men. Far too often, Christians, Christians hold to 
the traditions of men, all of these holy days, yet far too quickly, they forget the commandments of Jesus Christ. They forget that Jesus is alive. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He loves us and he cares for us. People forget that. They forget that he wants a relationship with us and he wants to lead us every single day. Do we want to be led by our creator or do we want the way of the world, false fellowship, false brotherhood? Do we want the truth or do we want lies? May the grace of Jesus be with you.